Okay. Good morning, everyone. And good morning to those who are online as well. Okay, let's begin this session with a word of prayer. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for this beautiful day, and we thank you, Lord, for your presence in our lives. And we pray, God, that even as we learn and study together, that you will teach us. Lord, help us to grow in your wisdom and your knowledge, your understanding, and to do and fulfill everything that you've asked us to do, Lord. We thank you. We submit this time into your hands. Uh, Lord, we pray that you speak to our hearts. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right. So last class we did uh, 41, chapter 41 and chapter 42. Right? We looked at living sanctified in Christ. And some of the common questions that people asked, right? And last class, we had quite a few questions coming in uh, regarding common questions. Uh, if we have time towards the end of the session, meaning the end of this course, uh, we'll come back and you can ask questions regarding this. Let's get to section five, chapter 43, which is identified with Christ. Now, there are two important words that I want to bring to your notice. Number one is substitution. We, do we know what's the meaning of substitution? Right? How many of you know how to play cricket or football? Right? So when a sportsman, one of the team members are injured, what happens? The substitute comes in and takes his place. Does the substitute have all the authority? When he's on the ground, does he have all the authority? He doesn't have the authority. Do they ask him to sit down? You don't touch the ball. He has all the authority, right? So for example, the captain is injured. The substitute comes in. Now the substitute has become the captain. Is he the captain? <laughs> yes or no? Yes. The moment as a as a football in, in especially in soccer in football, it's happened many times. The sub, the captain is injured. You can have one young player who's there only for six months in the team. They put that band around him, saying that he's the captain. The moment he has that, he's a captain. He has all the authority. Substitution. Jesus became our substitute. That's what we studied, right? Who was supposed to die on the cross? Who was supposed to take the punishment for our sins? But who took it for us? Jesus. That's called substitution. Now, the another word that we want to talk about is called identification. All big words. Identification, right? So let me explain in natural uh, to help you understand what is identification, right? So, for example, two of their two friends are talking, right? And one of them says, hey, you know what? I, uh, I'm going through a very difficult season, right? I did badly in my exams, right? Now, this other friend says, hey, even I did badly in my exam when I was in, you know, when I was growing up. And when I was in class, even I did badly in my exam. Even I felt the same way you are feeling. So what's happening? This person is identifying with the other person, right? You understood what I'm trying to say, right? So when I see students sitting here, I can identify with you because there was a time I was sitting. It's called identification. I can identify, right? I've, I've gone through that situation that you are going through, right? And many times you go through situations which others go through. Now, Jesus identified with us. Okay, and so we're going to look at a few scriptures here. Romans chapter 5 and verse 12 and 19. Therefore, just as through one man sin entered the world and death through sin, and thus death spread to all men because all sin, verse 19, for as by one man's disobedience many were made sinners, so also by one man's obedience, many will be made righteous. One man's disobedience, we saw this many times, Adam's disobedience, all of us identified with sin. 
but with one, one man's obedience, that is Jesus' obedience, we all identify as children of God. Did Jesus identify with us? Yes or no? Yes? Don't look at others and answer. Did Jesus identify with us? Did Jesus become sin for us? Yes. Jesus was Jesus is God, yes? But he came down as a man. So he identified with us. Did Jesus sleep? Did he eat? Did his legs pain from walking? He, he identified with us. Now, if God the Father was God himself and he didn't come onto this world, we would have continued to be in the same problem. Sacrifices every day. But he identified with us. right? So by one man's obedience, that is Jesus' obedience, we all become his children. right? 1 Corinthians 15, uh, and we'll read a few verses there from chapter 15. For since... By one man came death, by man also came the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, even so in Christ all will be made alive. So wonderful. Because of Adam, did God design sin? Uh, did God design sin? Did God create sin? Come on, I want, I want to hear you guys. Did God create sin? Did God, no, Pastor. Did God design death? No. So how did sin and death come? Through one man, Adam. Through Adam. Thank you, Gertrude. Yes. Through Adam and Satan, Satan uh, through Satan and through Adam came sin and death. Now, after Jesus died, what did he do? Jesus was a human being. He had a body. Right? When Jesus died, what happened? He washed our sins. Okay, that's on the cross. Now, after he died, what happened after he died? He resurrected from the dead. Right? And so what will happen to you and me if we belong to Jesus? When we die, we will be resurrected from the dead. So just as sin entered through one man, we will die a physical death. But in the spiritual, we will rise up again. We're learning in on Sunday, we're studying about last Sunday, we talked about it, right? The resurrection, the rapture. We'll get a twinkling of an eye, we'll get a glorified body, we'll be with Jesus. Imagine that. We'll be with Jesus. So the the body videos. The body will disintegrate. The physical body will disintegrate, but spiritually we will be raised again, right? So that is identification. What did Jesus do? He identified with death. He identified with each one of us. He became sin for us so that we can become his righteousness. Right Now, the truth of identification is written in Romans chapter 5, verse, oh, is it Romans 6? Yeah, Rom yeah, Romans 6, 1 to 23. Okay, uh, it's a big passage here, but let's just pick up a few verses. Romans chapter 6, 1 to 23, and this talks about identification. So verse 1, what shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? Now, go to verse 3. Or do you not know that as many of us were baptized into Christ Jesus, were baptized into his death? Verse 4, therefore we were buried with him through baptism into death. And just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in the newness of life. For if we have united, been united together in the likeness of his death, certainly we will also be in the likeness of his resurrection. Knowing this, that our old man was crucified with him, that the body of sin may be done away, that we should be no longer slaves to sin. For he who died has been freed from sin. 
Now, if we died with Christ, we also believe that we will live with Him. Knowing, verse 9, knowing that Christ, having been raised from the dead, dies no more, death no longer has dominion over us. Now, this entire passage is called the reversal. Everyone say reversal. You know, when, you, when you're driving, you, you have the reverse gear, right? And what happens when you hit the reverse gear? The car goes backwards. The reversal is what Satan did, Jesus undid it. Look at these verses. Just as we are in Christ, we are united in Christ because of his life, we will, because of his death, we are united in Christ. The same way we'll be united in Christ in his life. Here it says, just as we, uh, verse 6, our old man has been crucified with Christ so that we can live as new human beings, new believers. For the death he died, he died once for all, and so that we can believe in that death and live eternally. You see what's happening here? Everything has gone reversed. What It's like the devil has created... Oh, a structure. What Jesus did is he broke that structure and he built a new structure. He said that is no longer there. Right? Verse 14. For sin shall not have dominion over you, for you are not under the law, but under grace. Verse, yeah, I'll just keep going, right? What then? Shall we sin because we are not under the law, but by grace? Certainly not. Do you not know that to whom you present yourselves slaves to obey, you are the you are that one slaves whom you obey, whether of sin leading to death or obedience leading to righteousness? But God be thanked that though you were slaves of sin, yet you obeyed from the heart that form of doctrine to which you were delivered. Okay, let's go to verse 22. But now having been set free from sin and having become slaves to God, you have the fruit of holiness and the end everlasting life. For the wages of sin is death and the gift of God is eternal life. Satan made us slaves to sin and death. What is a slave? Servant, a slave. A slave is... Somebody who has to do everything that the master says. So if you see in the old, what happens is we were slaves to the devil. The devil will say, you do this. Okay, I, I will do it. Why? Because we were under this slavery, under his dominion. But here in the new covenant, we are no longer slaves. In the new covenant, we are no longer slaves. Which means what? We are no longer in bondage. So who's we are not sl slaves to the devil, but now it's a saying we are slaves to Jesus, to God. Meaning God is now our master. And God will not take us away. He will not make us do unholy things. Here, Satan will take us away. But here, God will make us to live a holy life. Right? So, what kind of the form of doctrine? Romans chapter, look at verse 17 and 18. But God be thanked that you were once slaves of sin, yet you obeyed from the heart that form of doctrine to which you were delivered. Now, what is that form of doctrine? The, the word form in Greek refers to, to a shape or a molding. How many of you have seen uh, how they make you know, potters? Sometimes they have a certain shape and they fill that pot with clay and they leave it for some time. And whether the shape is oval, whether the shape is triangle, whatever the shape is, when you put that clay inside and the clay dries, it becomes that shape, right? 
And so here Paul is saying the doctrine or the teaching delivered to them, when they obeyed the teaching, the gospel which Paul preached, their heart was molded towards God. Right? This teaching was, uh, was to bring them away from a place of sin to being in a place of righteousness. You know, you've heard that song, Change My Heart, O God. You are the potter, I am the clay. Right? So now what Jesus is doing is he continues to work in our life. He continues to tell us, hey, your the Holy Spirit continues to speak to us, saying, You're not a slave to the devil. If the devil is tormenting you, if you're in continual sin. It is not because Jesus has not done anything about it. It is because we have forgotten who we belong to. If we are slaves to the devil, we'll do what the devil says. If we are slaves to God, we will do what God says. Right? We died to sin the moment you and I believe in the Lord Jesus. The moment you say, Jesus, come into my heart, make me a new person. We have been crucified to sin. Sin has no mastery over us. Sin has no dominion over us. But if we open doors, right now, for example, we are a young believer. Six months, we're believing in Jesus. Obviously, there'll be temptations. Obviously, we may, we may fall into those temptations. But what happens after two years and three years, or five years, suddenly you're stronger. Right? You're not able to, you're not easily falling into those temptations. You're not easily falling into sin. You're not easily falling into the trap of the devil, but you're stronger. So this whole process, Paul is saying, the moment you accept Jesus, you are a new person. You're dead to sin. Sin must not be something that you should run to, but you should run away from sin. Everyone is understanding this, right? Don't open the door for the devil and say, okay, devil, it's okay, nobody is there. It's okay, I will do this. And then don't say, oh God, where are you? God is there. He's already said, you are, you are dead to sin, but we are opening the door. So we need to close those doors, right? We need to say, devil, get out of my life. Get out of this uh, area of my life. Close the door and ask the Holy Spirit to work. Right? We are identified with his death, burial, and resurrection. Now, Paul is stating in this verse, it's very important to understand this. Romans, from verse 3 to 5, how many of you are water baptized? All, most of us are water baptized. Now, water baptism... Paul is talking about here, he's, he's stating what happens when we are water baptized, right? So he's saying here, do you not know that many of us were baptized into Christ? What happens? We are, we are buried with him. Everyone say buried. We are buried with him through the baptism into death. Just as Christ raised, everyone say raised raised from the dead and even so we shall walk everyone say walk three words right first one buried raised and walk when we partake in water baptism we identify with the death the moment we are in the water we identify with the burial and when we raise up the resurrection, the walk of our life, we identify with these three aspects. So Paul is talking about it here. We express that when we are immersed in water baptism, we are spiritually one with Christ, and we are also immersed and made one in his death. That is, Christ died, we are new creations, and when we raise up from the water, we are new people. So what are the three words? We identify with the first one, death. What's the first word? What's the first word? In water baptism, 
what is Paul writing here? He's identifying with three things. Burial. Okay. Okay. Walk. And then walk. Yes. His we identify with his death, burial, his resurrection, and his walk. And the walk that he walked as new creations. Right? There are five things or five points that Paul indicates that we as believers do not live in. Right? Like, uh, let's just look at those five points. Page 59. We Firstly, we are crucified with Christ, which means the body of sin is destroyed. When Jesus was crucified, now, you need to picture this. Look at two sides, right? One is the natural. Think, okay, one side, you think of Jesus dying on the cross. Okay, you have that picture? Okay, and one is you look at yourself standing. Now, first one, he was crucified. What happened when Jesus was crucified? His body gave up, right? Physical body was dead. It is not that Jesus pretended to be dead and then suddenly he woke up and then, oh, I, I'm not, now I'm alive. No, he was dead, right? The spear went into his side, blood and water came out, water gushed out. Romans, I, you know, said, uh, the history says that he, Jesus died. Resurrection, forget, but there was a Jesus and he died by crucifixion. So Jesus died. Physically, Jesus died. Now, when you and I are in Christ, we are crucified with Christ. Now, nobody's saying, okay, go on the cross and get crucified. But what he's saying is, just as how Jesus died in his body, you and I are dead to sin. Physically, we are dead to sin. That is the, that's the spiritual understanding. We're dead. This, sin will come, our temptations will come, but we can overcome. A body has been, the, 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 the body of sin was destroyed. Two, we are buried with Christ. When Jesus died, they brought him all down from the cross. What did they do? They took him and put him into the tomb, right? And what was that? What is there in the tomb? Was he uh, listening to music? What was, he, what was Jesus doing in the tomb? He was in the tomb. A tomb is a place of separation. Nobody who wants to, uh, you know, enjoy their life goes and sits in the cemetery. Right? That's the last place you don't want to go. Tomb refers to death and separation. Right? Separated. Now, you and I, when we are in Christ, we are separated from our past life. Right? We are separated from our past life. So our life, what we were before and what we are now, there's a separation. There's a distinction. We cannot say, you know what, before I was a believer, uh, I did all of this. I was a gang leader. And now I still have those. Even though I'm in uh, church, I'm still a gang leader. It can't be because there is a separation. Your old life is old. Your new life is new. Right? Third one, we are resurrected with Christ, meaning Christ gives us a new life. When Jesus rose from the dead, what did he do? He met with everyone. Right? There was new life. Jesus was not spirit. It was not that Jesus was, uh, you know, oh, nobody should see me, so let me hide behind the tomb. No. He was there. He went. He, Five hundred odd people saw him. He met with the disciples. He had food with them. Right? You and I, when we are in Christ, we have a new life. Old things have gone. Fourth one, we are raised up into the heavens with Christ. That means what? We are separated from this present world. Right? We are, though we are in the world, we don't behave like people in the world. We behave like children of God. Ephesians 1 says, we are seated with Christ. Right? Seated in Christ means we are positioned to, in a place to rule and to reign. 
who is stronger the devil or you and me who's stronger you sure you got to be convicted of it don't think of, oh the devil has so many people no who is stronger you are stronger or the devil is stronger we are stronger how do you know that tell me one bible verse to prove what you're saying that you are you and i are stronger than the devil tell me one bible verse pastor we are blessed with all heavenly uh, blessings uh, okay. we are blessed with every spiritual blessing in heavenly places yeah thank you so much gertrude yes we can say that the god uh, who is in breath go ahead he, lucy he who is he who is in us is greater than who is out mm. yes even moses said that he who is in us is greater he that is in the world jesus is saying i've seated you in heavenly places the heavenly places can there are demons and all of that that are there jesus is saying hey, i'm i'm seated you above that to rule to reign now god is saying you're a lion but you if we say no no i'm a i'm a, i'm 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 a cat house cat oh you're a lion god is saying hey you're a lion you're an eagle no i'm a crow now god what will god say god will say see i'm telling you something better you're saying something else he's not going to force you no you are an eagle you are an... if you feel that you want to be like this i'm giving you something better take it use it right so everyone understood this we identify with christ and christ identified with us he became a man he went through all of this death burial resurrection it was not to fill up the pages in the bible it was for you and for me right it is for you and for me that through his life we find salvation okay 44 chapter 44 we are crucified with christ when the old man or the old person has been crucified let's read colossians chapter 2 11 through 12 in him you were also circumcised with the circumcision made without hands by putting off the body of the sins of the flesh by the circumcision of christ buried with him in baptism in which you also were raised with him through faith in the working of god who raised him from the dead and you being dead in your trespass and the uncircumcision of your flesh he has made alive together having forgiven all trespass so again is the same what we've been discussing that we have been crucified with him chapter 45 we have been buried with christ which means we have been separated from our past life we have the the influences or the 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 character of our old life has been separated from us right we no longer have uh, you know maybe in the, you know before becoming believers we may have been people who are always angry but the moment we become believers we are separated from that anger or we are separated from that jealousy we are separated from uh, pride right now even if it comes it has no mastery over us so we can tell ourselves hey Yes before I used to get angry I used to get upset but now as a believer I don't have to live that life because Christ is giving me a new life he's giving me the fruit of the spirit any of you know what are the what is the fruit of the spirit so love joy peace yes all of those have you seen sheep you know like sheep it sounded like sheep <laughs> right but i know that you know it right so what i want you to do is learn this now you notice the word it's not fruits what is it fruit look at an apple when you look at an apple it's one fruit right you don't have half orange in that it is apple one apple the fruit of the holy spirit love joy peace patience kindness gentleness faithfulness self control all of those gifts all of the fruit is one so we can flow in all of those gifts all of the fruit is for us 
right? You understand? So in the old, when before becoming believer, we may have been, you know, uh, maybe you know, watching things, uh, things that are uh, not good for us, or saying uh, behavior is you know not right. Um, but now, when we become believers, all of a sudden, those the past life has changed. Those things that I used to do in the past no longer interest me. Right? The things that I used to see and do in the past no longer interest me now. Why? Because I've been crucified with Christ. What Christ did for me, what Christ is saying is my, my body and my desires have been crucified. So now I'm with Christ. Whatever Christ wants me to do, I will do, right? Then we are buried with Christ. We talked about this as well, right? We are identified with his death. Uh, we are resurrected with Christ. That means we are made alive. We've been given the Zoe life of God, right? Now, this is not normal life. Everyone are living right now. We are all living, right? We all have breath in our lungs. Good. So this is the natural life. But here, Paul is not talking about the natural life. He's talking about Zoe life, the God kind of life. When God gives us life, it is, it is abundant life. Right? It is, it is not, he's not talking about the physical life. He's talking about a spiritual, in the spirit, he gives us uh, an abundant life. Outwardly, we may be wearing very outwardly, we may just be simple people, not very rich, not you know, uh, very famous, very simple people, right? With not much talents or just very simple people. But inwardly, in our spirit, God has put life into us. That is a Zoe life, eternal life. The moment, you know, here's the, here's the most wonderful part for us as believers. Wonderful, wonderful. That should encourage us. Do we all go through trials and difficulties? We all go through. But remember this, when we die, our physical body is gone. The Bible says we will be with the Lord Jesus. Now, if this is not interesting or this is not comforting, there is nothing more comforting for us. Imagine we spend 20 or 30 years every day praying and singing hallelujah, hosanna, all of that. Right? 20 years we are doing that. But in the moment, we will see him face to face. The same Jesus who has been praying for 20 years now, when you see Jesus, you, you're not going to sit and pray to him. In heaven, we are going to be with him forever. And that should encourage us. We are resurrected with Christ. We are new creation. It expresses his life, his character, his virtues, his purity, his integrity. The way he walked is portrayed in our life. Right? Remember the story of the eagle and the chicken? Remember the story I told you? What do you want to be, an eagle or a chicken? Nobody said chicken? Very good. You be the eagle. You have the, we have these virtues. Once we are buried, resurrected in Christ, Christ is giving us his life, his virtues. So we have to behave that way. If I don't behave that way, or if I don't walk in truth, if I don't walk in authority, I don't walk in power, I don't walk in the, in the holiness of God, in integrity, then I'm choosing to be a chicken. And God is saying, hey, you're an eagle. Right? Then we are raised up in Christ, Ephesians 2, 6 and 7. And raised up together and made us sit together in heavenly places, that in the ages to come he might show the exceeding riches of his grace and his kindness towards us in Christ Jesus. So, 
here raised up with Christ, meaning we are separated. He, he, we, we are not of this world, but he has, give, he has called us. He has separated us for another purpose. When the Lord Jesus looks at us, he doesn't just look at us as his children, but he looks at us as kings, as priests, as leaders. Right? He looks at us as bought by the blood of Jesus. And look at this verse here. He says in the first portion, Ephesians 6, 2 6, raised us up together and made us sit together in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus. It's like the Father is saying, I'm going to raise you up. I'll make you sit with Jesus, my son, in the heavenly places. And there you will rule and you will reign. I'm giving you the authority. Now, some, the, some of us may think, where heavenly places? In Bible college itself, I'm not a leader. How can I be a leader in heavenly places now? Jesus is saying, I'm giving you all of this. Right? So remember this, with great responsibilities, or with great power comes great responsibilities. If God is calling you, for example, to be a pioneer in the ministry, to start a church, if God wants you to start a church, what is it that you must do? Sit and wait? Well, what is it that we must do? If God wants you to start a church, God says, okay, I'm going to choose you and I'm going to anoint you. I want you to do this ministry. Your ministry is going to bless all across people all across the, the nation of India. What is it that you must do for that? Sorry, what? What is the word? Preach the word, okay? What else you must do? Sorry? Ah. That's what, that's what, that's what I wanted. I wanted that word. Initially, it's okay. I wanted the word hard working. It's hard work. Remember this. I read this in a book. Uh, I leave the book unnamed, but I read this. God will not anoint lazy people. Of course, we are anointed. God has anointed us. Right? But if we want to do something for God, and if we are lazy, it's going to be very difficult. You think, for example, you want to start a church. Do you think if you're not doing anything, or you say, okay, once a week, I'll just go meet some people, come. Do you think your ministry is going to do well? There has to be dedication. There has to be hard work. God looks at hard work. That is how God has designed it. Right? If God is wants, if you want to see God work in your life, you got to sacrifice. There's got to be hard work. You got to sacrifice your sleep, sacrifice your time, sacrifice people, sacrifice friends, sacrifice food. No, eat healthy. But there'll be times you'll have to fast and pray. It's a life of sacrifice. Right? And if we don't sign up for it, if we say, okay, I want to become pastor, I want to become ministry leader, and we're not willing to do it, we will see our life just being the same. One year will go, five years will go, ten years will go. You'll still we will still be in the same place. Why? Because remember, there's a cost to the anointing. There is a price that we must pay. Did Jesus pay the price? See, we can know how to play guitar, keyboard and all. All that is good. But is it anointed? The guitar, keyboard, hundreds of people are playing. Millions of people will play. No problem. It's not a big deal. It's not a big deal at all to play instruments. But is it anointed of God? Is God anointing 
your songs. Is God anointing? Is God anointing you when you're playing? Do you experience the power of God? Are people being blessed? That is the anointing. And so here it's saying that God calls us and He sets us apart. We are not of this world. He conforms us. And he says, do not conform to the standards, the ungodliness of the world, but you do what I'm telling you to do. Fulfill the call, the purpose of God in your life. He's saying, you're seated with me. You're positioned to rule. You're positioned to reign. It is all about how we look at things. Are you understanding? Right? It's all about how we look at things. If I look at a certain task, if I look at it as, oh, I don't want to do it, what will happen? I will not feel like doing it. But if I look at a task and I say, OK, God is giving me this opportunity. God is opening this door for me. So I will do it. You know what was the first thing that I did when I joined APC? I wanted to be a preacher, stand with the mic, preach. That was the first thing. Cleaning the chairs at Central. So I take every Sunday two, three handkerchiefs, take cloths, wipe the chairs. Every single chair, 400, 500 chairs. We had volunteers, but that's what we used to do. But I still look at it. Is it interesting? No, you guys are all blessed. You all just go there, stand, sing, clap, and come back. But when we were there, it was a different story. As students, you know, we had to do a lot of things. You all are blessed. You all have a van coming and picking all of you know how we went. Uh, that's why. So it's good. But you gotta go through certain things in life. You gotta go through those hard work. You gotta put your hand to the plow. Work hard. That's when God is gonna. See, and God is going to use you only if He sees dedication. Only if He sees there's some, there's a zeal, there's a, there's a passion. That's when He begins to work in your life, right? Chapter forty-nine. No, consider and yield. So three key words in Romans chapter six is to know, to reckon, and to yield. Right? What is to know? To know that you have been crucified, buried, and raised from the dead. Reckon, which means accept it as a truth, accept it as a fact. People will tell you that, how do you know Jesus died, resurrect, died? You know, he was uh, buried, and then he resurrected, and now he's alive. And then you're saying you are also buried, dying, and resurrecting. What is happening? People will ask all these questions. What will you say? Hey, I know what Jesus did for me. I know I am living with him. I, I do not yield to the things of this world, but I know I'm a child of God. Right? So in the spiritual realm, I have dominion, I have authority, I have power. Right? And then you yield, which means you give yourself to the Lord, you surrender yourself, you present yourself to God. Every morning when you wake up, surrender your mind, your thoughts, your words are what we see, surrender your body, your spirit, your soul, surrender it to God. Say, God, even as I go about today, I surrender my body, my soul, my mind, everything to you. My spirit, everything, I just surrender to you. What did Jesus do? On, what was his last thing that he said? Lord, into your hands, I commit, I surrender my spirit to you. I just surrender. Three points. What are the three points? First one, know that you've been crucified with Christ. Two, consider, or you can say reckon, right? Reckon means to, to, to be convicted of it. It's a fact. And three is to yield, right? To give yourself to the Lord. Romans, okay, let's look at uh, 50. I'm going quickly because we have a lot of content and a lot of it is repeated. So we just look at it quickly, right? Um, Romans 8 talks about condemnation, right? For verse 2 says, Romans 8, 1 and 2, uh, verse 2, For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made us free from the law of sin and death. 
right now the old covenant the law was a law of condemnation why because every time they went they did those sacrifices there was still condemnation i haven't reached the place where god wants me to be there's still that feeling of condemnation but the law of the spirit was one therefore now there is no condemnation in christ jesus old covenant they were going by works new covenant they're going by grace the grace of god right you are free from the law of sin that means uh, a law that is that is working in our bodies or things that try to make us sin we are free from that right the body of death that is this body that is death doomed is death bound has been freed what can the devil do what can the devil do he can he can bring death but you know if we look at church history um what is it in church history you know there are so many men and women of god who at the face of death I'm talking about physical death at the face of death they did not even think twice they stood strong said it's okay i have to go i'll go but i'll be with christ look at stephen in the bible did stephen say okay for two weeks i will not preach about jesus leave me please leave me okay i will not preach that's all he had to say stephen that's all he had to say i will not preach and he could have gone to another city and preach but he didn't say that he was firm he knew that the law of sin or or the the the, the body is just a physical body but god has given me life in the spirit right and so the we are also free from the chapter 52 we are free from the law of death um second corinthians 4 10 and 11 always carrying about in the body the the dying of the lord jesus that the life of jesus may be manifested in our body for we who live are always delivered to death for jesus sake that the life of jesus may also be manifested in our mortal flesh the life of jesus be manifested in our flesh do we want to see that in our life yes yes we want to walk like how jesus walked you know what did jesus say he said greater things than i did you will do i'm not saying right now we can do but but it's there it's a promise so we hold on to that promise the more we ask god the more we open our lives to him and say god work in my life the more we will see the anointing of god when his anointing is there there's nothing that the devil can do one thing that the devil is scared of is the anointing of the holy spirit he's scared of he cannot hold on he cannot right he will look for those but when you have the anointing the devil will going to run away Remember the verse in the Old Testament says the anointing will break yokes. The anointing will break the chains of the devil. So you and I must ask for the anointing. Amen. Right? And I want to encourage you to continue to do that. All right, we'll stop here. We will pick up from chapter 53 next class onwards. All right. Have a good day ahead. God bless you. Yes, thank you, Sanjay, for sharing your thoughts here. Yes, Stephen's sacrifice. Yes, thank you, thank you for sharing your thoughts.